Hey, what's happening? And still barbecue. And today we're gonna be working on a Boston butt slash pork shoulder. And they call them a couple different things, but essentially, this is what gets you pulled pork. So go ahead and get your your brew set up. Go ahead and get your coffee, because this is gonna be a long cook. So depending on how big your Boston butt is, it could be anywhere between six hours uh, all the way up until twelve hours, depending on how long you wanna smoke it. But it's gonna be a long and slow cook. Uh, I'm gonna show you all how to get your grill set up, how to put your coals on there how much coal you should put in your chimney to get it started and then we're going to move on to you know setting up the the pork shoulder getting our rubs together all that good stuff and so we're going to go over all that so stay tuned and uh, let's go ahead and get started so for my charcoal selection i'm choosing to go with the kings for long burn they say it's better for smoking so uh, i'm choosing those i'm guessing because it takes longer for them to completely ash over and so i'm choosing those because again we're going with a longer slower cook and then for my chimney, you'll see that we're not using as many coals. So you can see that's not filled up to the top. We don't have as many in there because we don't need the fire as hot. So less coals and those long burn coals. All right, so let's take a look at our grill. Here's how we have it set up. This is called a snake method. The way the snake method goes, we're going to place once we actually light our chimney we're going to place the lit coals at the beginning of the snake or the snake head you could call it that so once we place those coals at the beginning as the fire goes it's going to light all of these coals these coals are going to go all the way around to the very end now you can see there aren't a lot of coals on there because again we need this this fire to not be that hot so we want it low we want it slow and so you don't need that much fuel in order to keep it at a lower temperature. We also have wood chunks on there. That's going to give it that amazing smoked flavor. And you see we have it sprinkled throughout the snake. So use the snake method. You also see that we have this pan right here. This is drip pan. I put a pan there with some water. Uh, that's going to keep that pork shoulder really moist because it's going to have constant moisture in the air. So it's a little bit of art, a little bit of science. Uh, if you're used to those, you know, ribs where you just place them on one side, this one's a little different, a little more finesse, but it's going to be so worth it. So snake method, put your lit coals at the beginning of this snake head right here. It's going to burn all the way around till it gets to the end. And we're going to modulate those vents as needed. All right, so now we're going to actually get our Boston butt prepared. So I still have it in the wrapping, but what we're going to do is we're gonna take it out and we're gonna get it patted down so we want it dry. Uh, then I'm gonna place it on my cupboard, or excuse me, my cutting board behind me. And basically what I'm gonna do after that is just oil it down with some olive oil. That's gonna allow my rub to really stick to it. Uh, so you can use mustard. I've seen some people use a couple of different binders, but I just like to use olive oil. So we're gonna use that. And by the way, what I'm working with is a bone in, a four pound Boston butt. Uh, the pounds are going to vary, but uh, that's the size that I'm working with. Totally up to you. So let's go ahead and get that padded down. All right, so now that we padded down the Boston butt, what we're going to do now is apply that olive oil. So you want to rub it in there pretty good. So you'll see I have my container, and we're just going to, once we you know, drizzle it with the olive oil, we're actually going to literally rub it. So we're going to rub this oil in there because we want to make sure that you know, it's completely covered with our oil so that once we apply our rub, it sticks to it nicely. So again, I rub that all over, make sure the oil gets on there pretty good. We'll be ready to put our rub on here shortly. Alrighty, so we have the olive oil rubbed into the pork shoulder. So now we're gonna actually apply our rub. So. Uh, this is where it's more of an art than a science. Totally up to you uh, how you want to make your rub, what ingredients you want to put in there. Uh, what I put in mind is I put two tablespoons of garlic powder. I put two tablespoons of black pepper. I'm going to put some cumin, some chili powder. So I put a few different things in there. I'll have that in the description. But I, I put it all together and now it's in this container right here. So what I'm going to do now is actually apply it directly to my pork shoulder. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's go ahead and put that rub on the pork shoulder. So you definitely don't have to be stingy in this part. You want it completely covered. So, you know, feel free to cover it as much as, you know, you want. Uh, but I do it 
you know, I do a good amount on here. I'm, I'm definitely not stingy with my rub. And that's because, you know, we really want the seasoning to get in the pork shoulder. So, and this is also going to create a really good crust. So, we're applying this. You know, again, liberal amount, rub it in. I'm going to rub it in a little bit more, but that just kind of gives you an idea. You know, you want to you want to cover it, like I said. So, put that on there. And then once we do this, uh, this next step is totally optional. Uh, I'm actually going to inject mine with a mix of the spices that I just made as well as some apple juice. So you can skip that, not required, but I like to just to make sure um, it stays moist throughout the entire cook. But right now we're finishing up applying this rub. And we're going to be ready to inject this guy. Alrighty, so now we're gonna prepare the injection that I was just telling you all about. So, what I'm gonna do is take the rub that I was just using, I'm gonna put some in the bottom, a decent amount in the bottom. Then, here's where you can get creative. I use apple juice for mine, so I'm gonna take some apple juice and then I'm gonna pour that in our mason jar. And then what I'm also going to do, I'm going to shake that up just to make sure that that rub spreads pretty well. Uh, I like to also add a little honey. So this is totally up to you. You don't have to, but I just add a little bit of honey in there. And then I'm going to shake that up so that it spreads out. All right. So we have our injection concoction uh, shook up. So that spread out very well. So now we're actually going to take our injector and we're gonna take some in so you pull some out of there and then we're just gonna go in different parts of the Boston butt and just pump it up a little bit and you'll see the skin you'll see the tissues come up a little bit where it's getting some of that fluid in it so just you know just go all around and pump it up some and that's gonna keep it real moist throughout the cook and also bring out some amazing flavors so again, this part is totally optional. You don't have to do it, but I just found that it tastes absolutely amazing when you do this part. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and open the grill up and put our Boston butt on there. You see it's smoking a lot, which is good. I'm gonna place that, placing this right in the middle. Like I said, that's gonna sit there. I put the fat side down, totally up to you. But we're closing that. And we're not gonna open that for at least an hour. We are gonna keep an eye out on the temperature. So we wanna make sure it still stays within that 225, 250-ish range. Um, if we need to, we can adjust the vents to you know, bring the temp down or bring it up. But we're gonna let that sit for at least an hour and just check the temperature to make sure we're good. Uh, you don't want to open it up because opening the grill up is gonna cause your temperatures to dip more than you need it to. So we want that to stabilize. So let's let that sit and we'll come back to it. All right, so now we're at the three and a half hour mark. So we're gonna take a look to see how our meat is progressing. So let's see. Uh, so it's looking real good. So that bark is forming really well on it see those juices pooling so this this meat is really cooking good um, I rotate it again just for the heck of it <laughs> so I'm gonna rotate that still keeping it in the middle we're gonna close that up and let it sit for another couple of hours or so and um, once it hits like the five hour mark we're actually gonna wrap it so I'm gonna wrap it in some aluminum foil and I'll show you all what that looks like but we're gonna wrap it in aluminum foil to keep all the juices in and at that point we're going to be in kind of the home stretch of it so we'll let this sit for a couple hours and then we'll come back to it all right so now we're actually at the five hour and 15 minute mark so what we're going to do we're going to take our boston butt off we're going to wrap it in this aluminum foil right here so that it collects all of the juices uh you're also you're going to do the when you close it up you want to close it up on the top so that your juices can't escape out the bottom so we're gonna go ahead and wrap it in this foil, let it sit for another hour or so on the grill. Um, like I said, we want it to capture the juices and then 
it'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got it wrapped in this aluminum foil, placing it back on the grill for it to hang out for a while. All right, so we pulled our meat off at 190 degrees internal temp that we measured on our temperature gauge. And so I pulled it off, put it in the pan. It's been sitting in this pan now for about 45 minutes. So at this point, uh, all of the juices should have gotten into the meat really well. So if we open this up, you can see that it has a really good crust. Let's go ahead and pull this off. This is how you know it's really done. This bone just slides right out. I mean, it's, it's nothing for me to pull this bone out. So we pulled our Boston butt out of the wrapping. You can see this bone came out really well. That just, I mean, it was so tender that it pulled right out, no pressure. And so now we're actually gonna start breaking this meat up. And you can break it up by hand, just slowly pulling this meat apart and you can see just the fibers in it. it's broken down really well it's nothing for me to pull this apart so you just want to continue to work on this and you'll notice it's it's still hot because it's cooking even though you had it off the grill in the foil it was still cooking inside so this is still really hot so be careful but I mean you can see this is what we waited all those hours for to get this pork that's just so tender you can see the the smoke uh, rings in it you see how those pink edges around it, that's that smoke that really got in there. So we're gonna continue to break this down and go from there. All right, so after six and a half hours of having our meat on the grill, uh, taking it off for about 45 minutes to let it rest in the foil and then breaking it up, now comes the moment of truth. I made me a pulled pork slider uh, on a sweet Hawaiian, Hawaiian roll. And so I didn't even put any uh, barbecue sauce on this. I'm just gonna eat it just like it is. Uh, so let's see. Oh my god. So once you make this, you'll see how amazing this is. You know, it's a decent amount of fat in here, so you get a lot of good flavor, but you also taste the smoke they got in there. This is a staple. You can do so much with pulled pork, whether it's a taco, whether it's sandwiches. I mean, you can do it in a bunch of different ways, but you're going to thank yourself once you actually watch this video and try it out for yourself. Um, it renders so much meat that you could feed yourself for probably you know multiple days three four days easy um if you got a family this is easy a family meal for a couple of days look my, my son is sitting here like where's the food at so we're about to eat uh thanks for watching this video and still barbecue feel free to like subscribe share with a friend uh shoot we'll catch you on the next video see you